Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm out here right now on lunch. I'm refreshing a mock scrape that I got back here behind me. It's pretty windy here this afternoon, so I like to use these kind of conditions to come out and check trail cameras or refresh scrapes or do a little bit of scouting or whatever because the, 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 wind, the wind noise kind of covers my sound and then it also the wind is so strong that it kind of pushes my scent. See, I'm on the side of a hill here, so it's gonna push my scent way off over into the valley over there but anyway thanks for sticking out sticking around with us on the uh, deer journal so far this year as you've seen it's been an incredibly slow year but things are about to pick up i'm telling you now things are about to pick up it's getting that time we're starting to see young bucks showing up on trail camera now a lot of activity still nocturnal the mature bucks are finally starting to show back up again and unfortunately they're all nocturnal but it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time before they bust wide open. Typically around here, that comes usually between November 22nd and 27th, 28th. So that's usually when peak rut hits, but you start seeing your cruising bucks and they start moving from nocturnal to more daytime travel right about now. So stick with us things are going to pick up i'm telling you it's going to pick up deer activity is going to pick up we're going to start killing some deer and uh just hang out with us one thing i will say is yes occasionally i get comments from people on different social media platforms people complaining saying dude you don't ever kill any deer i don't want to watch an episode because you're not killing deer but you know what for every one comment that i get like that or message i get like that i get five or more from people saying what you are showing represents real hunting for the average person not everybody out there has a thousand acre lease not everybody out there goes to a place that has these god-awful large deer populations and you know in my situation i'm hunting on a small farm that i own or on the neighbor behind me or over on my dad and we're surrounded by people that hunt so it's not like we've got a thousand acres where it's just two or three or four of us hunting. It's, you know, one person per 20 acres and that's all the way around us. And some places around us, people are buying three, four, five acres and they're hunting on that three, four, five acres right along the property line. So I'm trying to show real world hunting, not let people be discouraged who see these hunting shows on TV where big bucks running everywhere and you walk out into a field with 30 deer in a field. That's not the way most people's hunting experiences go. Anyway, stick with us. I think you're going to enjoy it. Hit that like, subscribe button, leave a comment, and come along with us. Good morning, everybody. Heading back into the woods this morning. I've only got about two hours before I have to come out to go get on some work calls, but I couldn't pass up the weather this morning. We've had rain for the past day. Stick snapping behind me. We've had rain for the past day and a half. It's passed through today. It's going to be a cold day. And I'm hoping the bucks are on the move. So I'm making a long walk in. I'm in my base layers right now so I don't overheat. I'm going to get back in over here and I'm just going to hunt off the ground overlooking a hillside where I've been, where I've got a trail camera that's had some deer activity on it. So I'm optimistic that maybe a buck will come out on that hillside chasing a doe, but I don't have long. It's going to have to happen fast if it does. All right, well, I finally got situated. This isn't exactly where I was wanting to be. I wanted to be more over that way. <coughs> but the cattle were all over in that area. So I came over here. 
and this is the neighbor's property where I had permission to deer and turkey hunt and squirrel hunt and I help him out with stuff throughout the year and uh, he's got this old playhouse sitting back here overlooking this hillside see what happens this wind is hitting me right almost in my face so it's cloudy looks like it may even start raining again it wasn't supposed to so this may come in handy if it does start raining again but I've only got a little a little under two hours to go hopefully the deer start moving it's 34 degrees and wet and humid so it's and it's probably a seven to eight mile an hour steady breeze so it's it's chilly this morning let's hope it's enough to make these deer get on their feet and move Two sheep dog over there. Two sheep dogs chasing deer everywhere. <laughs> I've been seeing the buck sign where I was anticipating the deer coming out from and coming over into this field to give me a shot those dogs ran around over there chasing those deer and they pushed the deer off the other direction looked like a couple of uh, like Australian shepherds or I mean it's they, they were they were sheep dog basically sheep dogs so I called my neighbor and talked to him. There's a little bit of concern that someone is hunting back over here, trespassing and hunting. And they may be using those dogs to jump the deer because this time yesterday morning we heard the same kind of commotion. Dogs chasing and then a gunshot immediately afterwards. And about two weeks ago, no, on opening weekend of muzzleloader, we heard the same thing. Dogs chasing, and then we heard a gunshot. And so, there is a chance that somebody may be using these dogs to push the deer toward them. I would have never, th I would have never thought of doing that myself, honestly. So, I know people in some areas, in like Virginia and other places, I think they they hunt deer with dogs. You can't do that here. It's so foreign to me. I would have never even thought about it, but I'm beginning to think that may be what's going on because it's becoming too consistent that it's happening. Squ squirrel just fell out of a tree beside me. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to have to pack it up here in a minute and get back to get to work. It's going to be dead now anyway because those dogs have destroyed that whole area over there. Anyway, catch you next time. Alright, I'm back out here. I'm up in a different stand. This is the first time I've hunted out of this stand this year. I'm over here on this stand on the lower side of the pines overlooking this steep hillside. This is a crossing point. The deer cross between this section of pines and that section of pines. And I've mowed a couple of trails through here where they they've been crossing through these trails i don't ever hunt out of this stand until muzzleloader or gun season because it's not really set up very well for archery hunting but when you're able to use a firearm it really opens up a lot of shooting opportunities here for you so this has been probably my most successful stand on the farm over the past five or six years consistently so see if maybe we can cash in this evening.
Well, as you saw, um, I did not see any deer in my sit there. So I came on back out, made the steep climb out of the bottom of the hillside where I was hunting at. <laughs> and it's like 125 feet elevation gain. And it's only like uh, 300, 400 yards. So it's really steep. Um, it's really steep terrain. But I got out and got up to the top. And as I got to the very top, I jumped a doe and a fawn. So that was yeah, it's kind of funny how that happened. But anyway, it's the next morning now. I came back to the house and I was editing videos last night. Well, I got up this morning because I could not hunt today because I have work obligations. Technically, my vacation isn't till next week, but I think I'm going to take tomorrow off anyway. And I got up this morning. I was working. I went and looked out the window, and there was a doe and a fawn here in my yard feeding on. If you know what a polonia tree is, some people call them princess trees. They're an invasive tree. Um, I've been working to cut them all down. When we bought the farm, there were polonia trees everywhere, and I've been cutting them down. Well, there's still two or three polonia trees that are like 20 inches in diameter, maybe, that I haven't cut down yet. And those deer were eating on the seed pods from the polonia tree right outside my window just taunting me knowing that i'm here working and that i can't be out there and then i look behind them and there's another doe walking through the field the deer are moving this morning unfortunately my work has kept me from getting out if i get my work wrapped up this morning maybe i can hit it this afternoon take my son out and go see what we can do before muzzleloader season wraps up because rifle season opens in two days here, and then that's when all the yahoos get out and just start firing shots off at everything they see. So, anyway, all right, well, I'm going to get back to work. Well, we're back out this afternoon. Trey wanted to hunt this afternoon, and so we were kind of torn about where to go. We have decided to come back to the ground blind just because it's easy and we didn't have a lot of time left to hunt because uh, I had to work and he had to finish his school up. So we've got about we got about two and a half hours now. My brother hunted this morning and did not see anything, although he was really optimistic that there'd be a lot of deer moving, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. They, You would think they'd be getting really fired up we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirl see if anything happens have you decided what you're gonna shoot 30 pointer 30 pointer yeah. what if you have a spike come out or let's say you've got three or four spikes come through you're gonna shoot one of them does it add up to 30 no it doesn't add up to 30 no unless maybe you went to school in Alabama and then maybe <laughs> All right, well, you feel free to shoot whatever you want to. We are out of meat. I would love to get two deer on the ground in the next week. That would be nice. All right, folks, stick around. Let's see what happens. Well, my brother's hunting directly across the valley from us, and uh, he just texted that he's got deer chasing over beside him, so... Sounds like he's getting to some act activity over there. He didn't say if there was any shooters chasing, but right now, one of the neighbors who's you know several hundred yards away, apparently they're having a lot of landscaping work done right now because it is noisy, noisy, noisy. It is so loud. You can't hear anything down in the pines over here. If there was something going on, you couldn't hear it because all that going on down there, but... I don't know, maybe my brother will get a shot later and maybe we can go help him drag a deer out or something. Maybe Trey will get a shot. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that does it for our evening sit. That is end of legal shooting light, technically.
shooting light ends at 5.56 tonight. There's still a little bit of daylight left. I mean, you could see to possibly shoot something, but legally, shooting light is over. So we're going to pack up and get out of here. The good news is, though, my brother sent me a picture. He got the big 10 point that he's been hunting for the past few weeks. So we're going to get to the house. We're going to get a little bit of dinner. And then we're going to go over and go see him and see if he needs help with his deer. So that's the good news for the day. But he had deer chasing all around him. But it has been dead over here. Nothing at all. Anyway, let's get out of here. See him the other day though when you were hunting? I thought you said you saw. I thought you said you thought you saw him the other day. I ain't seen him since archery. Mm. When he was with the six. He, he's a young deer. Oh, he's really young. Yeah. He would have been an absolute monster next year, but he ain't gonna make it. I was gonna say, what do you think he'll be next year? Yeah. 